Awo. Shalom. Shalom. Just, just got up. And, uh, you know, this here. Awo. Awo. Shalom. Rastafari. Here we are in the line of Judah society, listening to some, some Rastafari positive, progressive hip hop. Uh, we'll about to drink some uh, some Kedem. This is some great juice right here. Excellent for a sabbatical and churchical, right? Some grape juice. Or if you want to get heavy on the sabbatical, you have some Manischewitz right here, you know? Some excellent Manischewitz right here. Now they ask us, well, why we like to drink um, grape juice. Well, here's some grape juice, some Kedem grape juice. Here's some um, Manny, some Manischewitz. Um, Concord, it's a Concord grape. American Concord grape right here. You know, if you have a bottle of this in the gates, this could be more like for the youths, for the children here. The grape juice right here. And here's a Manischewitz. As you can see the Manischewitz. So, you know, these two bottles right here. This is, um... <coughs> I won't call it alcoholic, but it's sabbatical. You understand? It has an alcoholic content, but this is this is some excellent Sabbath wine right here. You know, for the Shabbat, and especially for the Fasika. Fasika is upcoming. Fasika is our Passover. Is the Passover, the Passover season. I think it's Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We like we like to listen to to rap music, especially if it's positive and progressive, um, so called hip hop. Uh, we like to drink uh, grape juice right here. And let me just demonstrate. A little thirsty, actually. Pray to I, you know, some some grape juice. Uh, whoa, some grape juice right here, all right? Now, there's a, there's a particular prayer that's associated with the uh, drinking of it. This is, this is a Seder, and um, this is the Seder right here in the Hebrew and the Amharic, direct from um, Israel, from our people out there, the day to Israel. In Israel right here and we're gonna go through that also because you know the Sabbath is coming up Sabbath is coming up um, and, and the new light and connected with that also is the Passover Passover is coming forward this year roughly the sunset sunset of the 6th of April so put that on the calendar and mark those seven days the upcoming uh, Fasika Pesach the upcoming Passover. I hear some of the grape juice. And there's a particular prayer. We say, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Malek Haolam, Boreya Pereya Hagafana. Amen, Amen. Bamarinya, and we say it in the Amharic. Baruch Ante Egeziavi Hiram Lakachin, Ye Alaman Goose, Ye Wine for a Ye Mita Fetter. Amen. Amen. Yes, I. So, yes, that was a great juice the Kedem the Kedem you know and this Kedem right here the Kedem the Kedem right here grape juice the Kedem it's the same as Kedem in the name of our Godfather the King of Kings in the name of Kedemawi Haile Selassie or Haile Selassie first now it's a little too early at least for I and I in the day you know, to um, take a sip of this right here, the Manischewitz. You can even see the difference in the colors. Let's see if we can demonstrate the colors. 
you can see this is this is unfermented right you can see that 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 pretty color right there right um which is really the top of the as as it gets higher and lighter we get the violet the ultraviolet right and then here this is the fermented you can see how dark and rich that is right there so just a difference in the colors so we highly recommend these these right here you know what i mean and we can get this you know you get this even from the so-called liquor store you know i'm sure a lot of you know where that is or you can go and get it from a a jewish uh, wine shop you know just go there proper so forth and so on say shalom shalom and let them know what you want to get all right so my brothers and sisters this is a really really interesting uh news uh cycle you know and for i and i for rastafari for the king of kings for our ethiopian hebrew um commonwealth i and i is like that fourth estate you know the media so we have to you know put out the message you know and we ask others to to fellowship in this it's very easy you know do a little vid everyone is doing it but you know let's contribute to the conversation here let's have not just a national dialogue but make I and I, as the once lost but now found base is Arayel, have a global reasoning and a dialogue about building the kingdom, raising up the foundations of great King David, David, which were torn down. But there's much more that we want to go into because um, <clears throat> uh, for, the, for the book club, this is the latest for the book club right here. This is the Vayikra. The the Vayikara, the Vayikara, the Vayikara, or Vayikra, and he called the Hebrew book of Leviticus, and this is the Torah portion, volume three, right, compiled by yours truly right here, and this goes with the set, you know, um, Shemot, which was the last uh, Torah portion, known as Shemot or the Hebrew book of Exodus, here we're in Vayikara, which is um, the Hebrew book of Leviticus, and we're approaching, in about a light or so, the second reading from this book, which is um, Av, we're still in the self-named Parsha, or portion known as Vayikara, 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 you know, and he called, and he called which lays out the laws for sacrifice, the ancient Hebraic uh, tabernacle laws for sacrifice are illuminated and brought forth in this particular book. Now, it's interesting because this book in the Hebrew, Hebraic, and Judaic way is often recommended for the starting point. It's actually one of the starting point um, teachings you know this particular book the book of Leviticus it's it said that this book is pure in the sense that the ideas that it teaches are pure ideas of course I'm thinking about the whole animal sacrifices so forth and so on might have a little bit of trouble you know from the world in explaining it but there's um, Rav Asi Rav Asi he said that the young children began their Torah studies, that young children begin their Torah studies with Leviticus and not with Genesis because young children are pure. And the sacrifices explained in Leviticus in principle, you know saying, in principle and in fulfillment in Yahushua HaMoshiach and through our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, are pure. So the pure, it says right here, the pure studied the pure. And this is from Leviticus Rabbah. A little quote right there from Leviticus Rabbah. And one other note we notice here in the summary. Another note that we notice here in the summary. Um, I think this is the weekly, was it under the weekly, uh, the weekly Makam. The weekly Makam. And the weekly Makam, the Sephardi. Jews, the Sephardi uh, Jews, they each 
each week they base the songs, the songs in their service, on the content of the week's Parsha. So their songs, according to Sephardi, um, the Spanish, Jewish, and Hebrew um, tradition, they base their particular songs on what each Parsha, each Parsha particularly contains, which is something very interesting. For Parsha of Ayikra, Sephardi Jews, they apply what's known as the Mark Amarast, the Mark Am that shows a beginning or initiation of something. And this is all contained in the, the first portion or the first reading known as Vayikra or Tarato, Tarato In this case, it's appropriate because Jews, I and I, even as black Hebrews and black Jews in diaspora and elect Rastafari, we are initiating the book of Leviticus. So, oh, you know, yes, you like hip hop. I will, I will. So anyway, brothers and sisters, this is a little, a little update. One to say that 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 Fasica, that Fasica is coming forward. That that this um, this uh, this year's twenty for twenty twelve, from the Gentile Western perspective, this year's um, Fasica Pesach is coming forward, and we want to share some um, some teaching on that because. As he was going through uh, Shemot, you know, saying Shemot, which is uh, for the previous Torah portion, the previous book or the book of Exodus, they were speaking here in the commentary um, that every time um, Fasica or Pas- Passover was observed, it was significant. Whenever in our history we observe um, Passover. And based on a lot of the questions and the reasonings that are that are coming in and the interests of I and I people, we see that we're also moving to that to that um, that focus point among I and I as the once lost but now found data is Israel, waving us as black Hebrews, Beta Israel, Hebrew Israelites, Black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, um, elect Arastafari. Because it says, in my father's house, Yehoshua says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would not have told you so. So therefore, we must recognize that we may have different names. There may be differences in um, certain matters of um, acceptance among the different black Jewish and the black Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite, Beta Israel, um, the Ethiopian groups, the Ethiopian Hebrew groups, the, the, the Rastafari or Rastafari groups as well. But that should not be um, the, significant, the significant matter. The significant matter should be about our commonwealth uh, fellowship and Keeley education. Education is the key because we learn more, we can do more, and we can do better because we won't be operating out of ignorance, but we will get to know the truth and in that knowledge of the truth. That's where the true freedom, that's where we, that's where we can gain true justice and ultimately true peace. You understand true peace because in truth the earth is the donies and the fullness thereof. But we've been ignorant of that. We've been ignorant of what role we play in the fulfillment of the King of Kings and his Christ, his will. And we've been ignorant of what his will is. So we've been doing the wills of our enemies because we've been ignorant of the will of our God and our Father, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So... Before we go forward, we want to just touch on this right here. This is in the key Tissa portion, and in, and in this uh, Shemot, it's on page uh, 462. There's a little note right here where it says that um, Exodus 12 and 23 and 27, there's a link. It links the word Pesach, or Passover, which we know as Fasika, to God's or John's act to pass over to Pesach. To Pesach, the Israelites' houses 
in the plague of the firstborn. Now in the Torah, the consolidated Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread, this commemorates the Israelites' liberation from Egypt, according to the mythos. But we know in the, in, in the manifestation of the reality in our present time, we're in a spiritual Egypt here in the, the northern region, the north country in particular, in North America, right? A spiritual Egypt. Now, this is that the Hebrew Bible it frequently notes the Israelites' observance of Passover at turning points, at particular turning points in their history. Numbers chapter 9, verses 1 to 5, it reports that Jah's direction to the Beta Israel, to the Israelites, to observe Fasika, to observe Pesach, to observe Passover in the wilderness of Sina or Sinai on the anniversary of their liberation from Egypt. So you get it when we speak about black liberation and we speak about what is our condition and what we are going through. And also notice, in addition to the grape juice and listening to the rap music, we are also wearing the hoodies. You understand? Because it's, it's, it's important that we recognize what the true what the truth is behind these particular symbols, you see, because our people are lost and they don't know themselves, they don't make the connection between the hoodie and Jah's hood, Jah's hoodie, or Judah, Yahuda, which is a part of our identity that the once lost still have not found fully for themselves. This is why the message, you know, this is why the message needs to go out. This is why we're sharing this with you all, some of you already know this, but this, it's a share with others. You understand? Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So on the Passover point right here, Joshua 5, 10 to 11, it reports that upon entering the promised land, which we as a people have not done as of yet, we still are in th this land, which is really not our own. You understand? This land, which is, yes, we have relation among the native peoples over here, but this land is not really our own. You understand? <laughs> you know, make us, make us recognize that we haven't entered, but when we do enter the promised land, the, the Israelites, I and I, and I, are to keep the Passover, just as they kept the Passover on the plains of Jericho, and they ate the unleavened cakes and the parched corn. They produced, the, which is the, was the produce of the land, the next day. Now, Second Kings, Second Kings 23, 21 to 23 reports that there was a king, and the king's name was Josiah. I will, I will. Oh, uh, that um, in Second Kings 23, 21 to 23. It reports that King Josiah commanded the base of Israel to, um, to keep the Passover in Jerusalem as part of Josiah's reform. That there was a king, King Josiah, sought to make a reformation, you know, to, to try to, you know, to try to stop the bleeding, in other words. Of the, you know, the situation that was then. It's like a lot of today, a lot of well-meaning black leaders are also trying to so-called heal this breach and trying to, you know, um, make reforms. But um, King Josiah at least had the right idea. He commanded the Israelites, right, the, the black sheep, to keep the Passover in Jerusalem as part of Josiah's reform, but also notes that the Israelites had not kept such a Passover. Notice this that the Israelites had not kept such a Passover from the days of the biblical judges, from the time of the Shoftim. You see, and this is the connection with the hoodies and the Shoftim, all right? Um, and even in the, the, the higher monastic orders, such as the orders that ones as Abuna uh, Petros, you understand, who was martyred. That's why we made the connection with the, the hooded martyrs as well. One are being hoodwinked about their true Beta Israel and Israelitish and Ethiopian Hebrew 
identity. You know what I'm saying? Know the truth about your true roots. Then a lot of things that we're going through now would be much more um, explainable and understandable. But the Israelites didn't keep, keep the Passover since the days of the biblical judges, nor all the days of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah, calling into question the observance of even kings David and Solomon. The more reverent Second Chronicles 8, 12 to 13, however, reports that Solomon offered sacrifices on the festivals, including the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And Second Chronicles 30, 1 to 27 reports King Hezekiah's observance of a second Passover anew as sufficient numbers of neither the priest nor the people were prepared. Just like, you know, we, we just mentioned that Passover's coming up the eve of April 6, 2012. And, you know, the seven days, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, um, which, which, which are the days immediately following, you know, the, the eve, and which it will be the evening of the 6th. Now, here's what we just thought about in the connection with our ancient history. You understand? And, and, and the Bible, and, and we can even say the prophecy prophetically, that um, um, Second Chronicles reports that King uh, Hezekiah's observance of his second Passover knew as sufficient numbers of neither the priests we as Rastafari, true Rastafari, are to be as, in other words, as the priests were vis-a-vis -vis the Beta Israel, vis-a-vis -vis our other Ethiopian, black, and Hebrew peoples here in the diaspora. But here in Second Chronicles 31 to 27, that sufficient numbers of neither the priests nor the people were prepared to do so before then, before that particular time. So it, it, it really shows, I mean, there's a real deep connection to the black experience. If, if, you, if, if you spend the time to really just study the data, study the information, study the facts for yourself. Ezra chapter 6, verses 19 to 22 reports that the Israelites, they returned from the Babylonian captivity. So in a sense, we're in this new Babylon captivity. You understand? Um, we're in this captivity presently. So when we look at the, the return Israelites, the Israelites who returned from the Babylonian captivity, they did observe the Passover. They ate in that time the Passover lamb and kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days with, with joy. Now, the main reason why I want to connect this is because we saw this in the Shemot. We didn't get an opportunity to really address it a little more in full, like hopefully we were able to do a little more in this present recording right here, but just to connect that as like kind of a message announcement that Fasica, that Pesach is upcoming this year, and if ones can, you know, um, please do, you know what I mean, to, to, to keep the, the Fasica, you're going to hear a lot about Easter too, because Easter is also connected with that, but we've touched on Easter, the Easter point as well, so, um, Coming forward, we want to touch some of the blessings, the blessings of the bread and the wine, and to go through that in a little bit more detail and spend a little more time on that. But speaking about the wine, right, the wine or the grape juice, a particular teacher had said to, who was it, Jordan uh, Shumate, a young African-American high school student, why do black people like rap music? She asked, oh, well, first she wanted him to read, um, a Ballad of the Landlord, a Langston Hughes uh, a poem, and he read it, but she was like, uh, read it blacker, read it blacker, right? And then she asked, well, why do black people like uh, grape juice, and this is some grape juice right here, why do they like grape juice and rap music? This is the grape juice right here, the Kedem. And as we mentioned right here, this is the Manischewitz, the Sabbatical wine. You can see the, the difference in, in, in the colors. This is non-fermented, right? And this Sabbatical wine right here and Passover wine, holy wine, is fermented. All that other stuff that folks be drinking, you know, all those other, these are kosher. And, and they are recommended for, and as we said, those who want to go with the non-fermented, this is excellent, the Kedem. Kedem as in Kedemawi, Kedemawi. See the Kedem right there, right? This is the grape juice 
right here. This is original grape juice. All out of the junk. Got a lot of brothers and sisters out there drinking. Get rid of it. Get some. Get yourself some real Kedem right here. And then we got the Manischewitz. You know, if you really want to go with real wine, biblically, scripturally, even up in your churches, this is what they should be drinking instead of all that, you know, that um, so-called that Gentile, you know, instead of all that Gentile wine, deal with some original, some original and good Jewish stuff. This is some real good Jewish wine right here. So we recommend the Kedem and the Manischewitz. And we say, uh, you know, Passover, Fasica, Rastafari, our Ethiopian Hebrew Fasica, Passover is coming up. You can check out the, um, the Holy Days. This particular, is this particular Rastafari, the Hebraic Holy Days right here, this particular chart right there, you know, it's up there on the website, www. LOJ Society.org. Excuse me, and you'll be able to download this so Passover, the day one of Passover, the 14th day of Nissan. The 2012 date is sunset of April 6th to the nightfall of the 13th. That's, that's the Fasica and the Unleavened Bread, the seven days of the Unleavened Bread. And for us, in the anointing, of the King of Kings and his Christ, this particular document right here also goes into some more details. Um, the Ethiopic Didiskilia, the Didiskalia, the Didiskilia. The version here is translated by J.M. Harding, and it's a very good translation. We're going to put out the Platt, um, Platt's version of it. He has the Ethiopic part, portion of the Ethiopic text, not completely. But it has some of the Ethiopic, and we can compare the translation that um, uh, J.M. Harding has here. But this is more full. It's, it's better annotated. There's references to the scripture, so you can use this to really build up a foundation of what we call the, um, the apostolic doctrine, the teaching of the apostles right here, this particular document. So um, we recommend if ones want to get a copy of our, our republishing of this, also go to the website lojsociety.org and click on the books link and you'll find it there as well as some other titles that you might be interested in. If there are some titles that ones want to request, um, please also hit us up on the contact as you know, on our contact, uh, through our contact link at the website as well. Um, brothers and sisters, this is a, a, another impromptu in a sense. Um, Another impromptu update before we get out of here. Um, I want to demonstrate this is some really good grape juice. You know, it's one that make it make us feel guilty because we like the fruit, the fruit of the wine. You know, the fruit of the wine. And it just says right here, this this basically says no sugar. There's no sugar added to this. There's no artificial colors or flavors. I don't know if some of y'all may like grape juice, but I don't know if y'all really have tasted some grape juice that don't have all that artificial junk. And, 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 and it has a sweetness. It definitely has a natural sweetness, brothers and sisters. Mm. I mean, if, if one want to go with um, non-fermented, you know, and some folks who've actually might have a drinking problem. Some of our brothers and sisters who've been out there in the world, you know yourselves, you might have a little drinking problem. So we wouldn't really suggest so much so, except with, with discipline, the Manischewitz. What we would more highly recommend to you would be the Kedem. The Kedem. You know, the Kedem, as in Kedemawi Haila Selase, the Kedem. Right, the grape juice, and it's 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 excellent. I really would like to share some, and 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 even share and have the Passover with you all. You understand, my brothers and sisters. But Passover is coming up. We're gonna deal with the blessings of the of the bread, as well as the blessings of the wine. 
so that we can do this um, in remembrance of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of Adoni Yahoshua Ha Moshiach. Mm. Excellent, my brothers. Go out, just get yourself a, you know, get yourself some grape juice. You know why? Why we as black folks like um? Why do we like? Let me say, why do we like uh, grape juice? I guess it's in rap music. It's just in our DNA. It's who we be. Do you know who you are? Do you know the half of the story that hasn't been told? Well, stay tuned. Grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and bring a willing and a receptive mind to hear some of the, the amazing truths, you understand, that hasn't been revealed since our ancestors. The Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the black Jews reached the shores of this America fulfilling Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Just go check it out. Read it for yourselves. And then ask yourself, of who does this speak of? Of who is this the prophecy and the revelation? It's the revelation of my people. And it's time for us to get prepared, my brothers and sisters, for the upcoming Passover. Are you prepared? Stay tuned. Shalom Rastafari. <laughs>